Well, hello and welcome to the first, what I hope will be a series of videos about sports photography. Yes, I know there are plenty of channels already out there on YouTube covering that very subject, but I'm hoping this one might be slightly different and you'll see why a little bit later on. First of all, let me tell you a bit about myself. My name is Jim. Back throughout the 80s and the 90s, I did a lot of freelance sports photography on a semi-pro basis. I ran my own business. I had a print business at the time, but I had lots of spare time. So I was out almost every weekend and sometimes in the week as well, covering all sorts of sport for local newspapers, regional newspapers, brochures, and a couple of the UK golf magazines. So back then, it was many and varied. I'm talking about the days of film as well and doing your own processing, not digital like what it is today. So one week I could be at the back of the local recreation centre covering one of the grassroots football teams. The next week I could be at the Ryder Cup and all points in between. So back then I'd be covering for the local sport. I'd be doing football and rugby and of course cricket in the various seasons. But I'd also do hockey tennis, bowls, karate, archery, clay pigeon shooting, American football, lacrosse, you name it. If the paper wanted it, I was out there somewhere doing it. But I did also get to a lot of golf tournaments as well and traveled a lot around the country photographing golf courses for the magazine and also had a nice week away in France photographing courses around there, which was very enjoyable, but an awful long time ago. However, as time went on, my print business got busier and busier. I had less and less time to do the photography. So eventually one had to give way to the other. So I decided to put away the camera for a while while I concentrated on my main business. That while turned out to be the best part of 20 years. But now that I've retired, sold a business, a lot more time on my hands, and the feeling to get out crept over me all over again. So I thought I would get out and do some photographic work, which I did. So for the past two or three years, I've been out again many weekends throughout the year and getting my pictures again in regional newspapers. It's nice each week to see something that I've taken on a Saturday appear in Monday or Tuesday's paper for people to see. So what I thought with this channel, I know many of the videos you'll see on YouTube will concentrate on the higher echelons of sport, especially here in the UK. It'll be a lot about football and of course a lot will be Premier League Championship and the English Football Leagues, which are great if you want to be out there photographing, but you are up against an awful lot of competition and you can't just stroll into those sports. You have to start at the ground level and work your way up and see how you get on, see how you like it. So what I do these days, I concentrate, when it comes to football, on the lower end of the English League football pyramid. I'm talking about the steps seven, eight, or nine. The players who aren't being paid to play, they play for the enjoyment of it. So I'm out most weekends. The rugby season has just finished. We are now in the middle of April as I'm doing this. The football season has only a week or two to go. And in the next week or so, I still switch over to doing cricket for the next three months or so until the pre-season friendlies come along for the football. So what we're doing today, we're going to a team that's only about 20 minutes drive away from me. They're a lower league team. They're actually in step nine of the football league pyramid. And they're in the Midland League Premier Division. And they're at the moment, they are top of their division by four points. If they win today and the second place team loses, this team will take the crown and they'll move up to step eight. If results don't all go their way today, it's all down to Tuesday night to see what happens then. So it's a make or break day for this particular club. I won't tell you what they're called until we get there. So any moment now, we shall pack up and we shall be heading down there. I shall be out there today dressed in short sleeves and enjoying the warm weather, but it's gone very, very cool again. I'm dressed for warmth and comfort and not to get a tan. But before we go down there, Let's point out something, this background here. You may be looking at this and you think, I've seen loads of videos on YouTube where the background is either going to be a wall full of big photographs of the photographer's favorite pictures or a wall with shelves and lots of old camera equipment on. This is neither of those as you can well see. What these are behind me is my other passion, which I've been doing for much longer than photographing. These are vinyl records. I'm a vinyl record collector and I've been collecting rare, obscure records since the back end of those swinging 60s. And I'm still buying them week in, week out. Although my wife says, how many vinyl records can one person have? The answer is never enough. It's always one more than you actually have. Most of you will know what vinyl records are if you are of an older ilk. If you're not, well, it's stuff like this. 
have a look at that one there we go Beatles demo hello goodbye lovely record to have or something a little bit older maybe going back to the 50s then you've got the Dell Vikings and the Whispering Bells so that's the sort of stuff I collect and again all points in between just that I thought this room was better this is my music room stroke studio I do record radio shows as well and I do them in here this just provided a nice clean white background I have got a wall with pictures on but it's in a different room entirely so that's what the background is Having said all that, well, let's pack up and let's go down and watch some football. And right, so here we are then, we have arrived. It's a 15 minute drive from home for me. I live in South Staffordshire. We've crossed the Rubicon and we've come into the West Midlands. So a fairly local game for me today and an area I do know quite well, having grown up not far from this particular ground. Although I must admit, in the many, many years I lived around here, I never actually came to the ground. But we'll have a look around. I won't tell you where we are just yet. We'll have a look and then we'll give you some clues to the whereabouts of what we're doing. Right, so as I said, this is an area that I know fairly well, having lived not far from here many, many years ago. And it's around about 1.30 Saturday afternoon. I like to get here fairly early if I can. It's fortunate here where we are, there is a large car park. A lot of the lower level clubs have very tiny car parks. And once you get both sets of teams and players and staff and everybody else arriving, plus a few spectators, it can get very crowded. Luckily here we have a large tarmac car park and next door there is actually a leisure centre with an overflow car park. So one thing here, parking is never a problem. So where are we? Well, luckily we have a KFC if we want one. So there's always somewhere to pop in for a bite to eat. And if I were to turn to my right here, about one and a half, two miles down the road here, uh, just on the outskirts of Walsall, we have an area called Shellfield which is where I grew up many, many years ago. And if we swing back round this way again, and if you could see beyond the trees and the houses over there, about a third of a mile up there on the top of the hill, you have what is now called Shire Oak Academy. But when I went there back in those swinging 60s, it was called Shire Oak Grammar School. So five days a week for nearly six years, I came past this place either walking if I couldn't afford the bus fare or on the bus if I could afford the fare. Back then it was known, it still is known today by most people, as Oak Park, although these days it's called the Titan Recruitment Stadium, but everybody knows it as Oak Park and that means we can be nowhere else but Walsallwood FC. The entrance is over there, I shall head over there now. That's today's opposition. Chiffnall Town, about 20 miles away from here. Let's see if we can get the result that uh, we want today. Right, and there we have it, the entrance to Walsall Wood Football Club. Quite a narrow turnstile entry here, which makes it difficult for me getting in with a backpack and everything else on, but I'm sure I can force my way in. I don't think I will say they've got music playing, so I'm going to have to mute this bit, otherwise I'm going to get a content strike off YouTube. And we don't want that. This is the important bit. A nice cup of tea and a biscuit, always waiting for me here uh, down at Walsall Wood. And I'm actually in quite a large room. Some places I go to, the rooms are very small, sometimes half a porter cabin shared with the officials. Down here, it's a nice big club room with plenty of seating and somewhere to sit and relax before I start getting outside and getting my kit ready. Can't beat a nice cup of tea and a biscuit though. So here is our first view of the pitch, set up for a bit of training, the players will be out very shortly uh, to start warming up. If you look across the way you'll see a stand over the far side, that is allegedly the oldest of its sort in England and I did ask somebody a short while ago what's so special about it and he said I don't know, I think it's all made of wood inside so we'll just settle with that. However it is quite an old stand if you get closer you can certainly tell it's been around for a few years. Rather like me in fact. Right, well it is half time. I had planned on doing a few pieces of the camera during the first half, uh, but it was quite busy. And then all during the half time break, they play music. 
and obviously if I've got music on this video in the background then I'll get a strike a content strike from YouTube so I can't do it but uh, the scoreline is 1-0 to Walsall Wood the teams are now coming out for round two the second half so if it stays that way and uh, it's the kind of the result they want. Raffle number is 770 I don't think I've won the raffle either, but I did get a decent cup of tea in there, which is one good thing. Places like this, uh, they always give you a good cup of tea. What you do find, as you probably saw earlier on in the video, and as I said, that you'll go into a room, usually with the officials, and there's normally tea and cakes or biscuits waiting for you, which is always quite pleasant. Sometimes it's quite a large room, like we have here, a function room. Other times you'll be squeezed into a porter cabin with with various other people and it can be quite um, quite friendly quite bijou in there but that's the way it is at least there's something for everybody and it's nice to be looked after in that sort of way so we get underway the second half now I'll try and do a few bits to camera if I get the chance and then we'll just see how things go otherwise if the score line stays this way it will be okay the weather's been okay as well considering all the rain we've had during the week then I'm quite pleased that it um, it has stayed dry I thought this pitch might be waterlogged today but it hasn't been it's been quite playable a bit heavy maybe but they they've got along with it all right it would seem off we go time's up <laughs> So that is it then. The game is now over. Uh, Walsall Wood have won 1 0, which means they remain at the top of the league. I'm not sure how their opponents, uh, in second place, it was Lie Town they were playing today. If they've drawn, I think, or lost, then it means that Walsall Wood are champions. If Lie Town have won, it means Walsall Wood are still in the lead uh, by four points with two games to play. And I suppose I really ought to do something I was going to do earlier on. I had planned on doing a few pieces to camera, as I mentioned. Uh, some kids behind me playing with the board. You get that a lot of places like this. I had planned on doing some pieces to camera earlier on, but at this ground, they have a tendency to play music before, during, and sometimes after the game. Very, very loud over the PA system. And obviously, if I do record, Whilst that's playing, I shall get a content strike from YouTube and we don't want that. Certainly not with the first of the uh, videos that I've recorded. So what I was going to say was a little bit about the equipment that I use. I know it's many and varied what people use in this game. And you'll normally find the top pros who do the championship, the uh, Premier League and everything else. They have a mix of stuff. I would say mainly it's Canon and perhaps Sony as well with a certain amount of Nikon thrown in and one or two others. I've always been a Nikon guy ever since the 80s when I used to shoot a lot of sport with a Nikon F4S and that did the job for me. What I'm using these days are two Nikon D850 bodies along with a Nikon 300 2.8 and Nikon 24-70 2.8 and Nikon 70-200 f2.8. And If you're going to do sports work like this it is really important to get the f2.8 lenses. Yes, I know they are not cheap, especially if you're buying into systems like Nikon or Canon, they can cost an arm and two legs, but you, they do the job. You can get by with other lenses, f4s, but once you start getting into zooms that are f4 to f5.6, well, you're losing a stop or two stops straight away. Not so bad on a day like this, because despite the fact it has rained a lot all week, it stayed remarkably calm and mild this afternoon. A little bit muddy underfoot, as I found. There's a right mess where my seat has been and where my monopod's been swinging around, but that's part of the course, I would have to say. But you will find if you use cameras like that, with lenses like that, then you lose a lot of light, which means once it does start getting dull, especially in the winter, I mean, come four o'clock sometimes in the winter, before the second half's even started, the floodlights are on, which usually at this sort of level, are quite useless. It's not until you get a lot further up the pyramid that you find the floodlights are of any use to you. So you'll end up shooting straight away at ISO 32,000 or 64,000 if you have a not, if you don't have an f2.8 lens and honestly you will struggle. Now I find with the cameras I've got, the D850s, yes they aren't sports camera bodies so you may wonder why I'm not using something like a D3, 4, 5 or 6 which are sports bodies. The reason being is I do other things besides this. I shoot a lot of 1940s wartime events when the season is on, which started just last week, and I do other things as well. So the D850 
it's a good all-round camera it has a 45.7 megapixel sensor it's got very fast focusing it controls the grain and the noise very very well so unless I start getting high ISO I normally don't have to do much with noise reduction when I'm processing on the uh, on the Mac now I shoot raw files when I'm out here and I know people are doing it for a living and will be probably using a laptop with photo mechanic or something similar on it they'll be live filing from the mash as it's going along so they'll be shooting jpeg maybe raw and jpeg for later but certainly jpegs which i can then send via photo mechanic and email down to whoever requires them straight away i don't have to do that i get my pictures into a daily newspaper or six days a week but these shots this level won't go in until tuesday the slightly high levels of shoot go in on monday I know I can send my JPEGs in on Sunday morning and when the afternoon shift comes in the newspaper they'll be there ready and waiting for them and off they go. So that means I can shoot RAW which gives you more control and I can do a lot more with it when I'm on the Mac. I, I do sometimes use noise reduction software if it's needed and I will use normally Topaz Denoise which is brilliant. So if you are shooting at very high ISO numbers then you do need to do something of that nature later on. But it does help if you've got f 2.8 lenses and then you can shoot wide open and keep that ISO down as much as you can. Raw files on this camera they are 45.7 megapixels like I said which is great because it does mean I can shoot from one end of the ground to the other and I can get a shot at the goal mouth at the other end and I can crop way in. I can still end up with a file which is five, six, seven megs in size, which is great for newspapers. I can email it quite easily and they get good quality at their end. One thing you do find though, I've got the motor drives on the D850s and they will give me nine frames per second. Not as fast as the D6s or, or the Canons, which will go much, much faster than that. But like I say, they are dedicated sports cameras. But with this, I find that if I shoot a burst, and I'll get maybe 20, 23 shots out of that, two and a half seconds or thereabouts, which most of the time is okay for a quick burst of somebody coming at you with the ball, and then the buffer kicks in. So you may have to wait a second or two before it clears enough to get a few more shots done. What I do find though, when I'm doing sports like this, well, rugby and football are two in the main. This wouldn't normally apply to cricket. But if I'm doing these sports, I will shoot compressed raw, so it just compress the file and that'll give me about a 27, 28 meg size file. That also means that my burst doubles, I can get 40 plus shots straight away so I can do a 4 or 5 second burst before the buffer starts to kick in and then I struggle to get the shots. That suits me, even 28 megs I can still shoot full length of the field, crop in and still get a 5 or 6 meg size file at the end of the day. So that really is what I'm looking for. I'm quite happy with something of that nature. Now if I'm doing other things, such I mentioned earlier on the 1940s events, then I will shoot 45.7 full size sensor, uncompressed raw, and I do a lot of portrait work, so I'm quite close anyway. This, what we're doing here, is quite different from the 1940s. With the 1940s, you've got a lot of people dressed up, a lot of reenactors, and they're all there, and they want their photos to be taken. And you ask them to come and do a, a photo shoot for you, they will oblige. With this, we're at the other end of the spectrum totally. This is a fast-moving game, so is rugby. People are going across you left, right, and centre, and you've got to keep up with the action. So like I say, you do this on the D850, either full sensor for something like the 1940s, or compressed raw for something of this nature. If it's cricket, it's not quite so bad because I rarely do a burst with cricket. I will shoot on a monopod like I have done here, but I'll shoot on a 300 f2.8, but with a two times converter on it, which gives me 600 mil at f5.6. That is fine for what I want, and you don't tend to do long bursts with cricket. It's a short burst of action, and then sit down for a few seconds, and then short burst of action again. Whereas with this, with football and rugby, it's non-stop action, you have to keep up with it. So I also would meant to say where I tend to sit. Those young kids haven't gone away yet. I also was gonna tell you whereabouts on the pitch I tend to sit. And everybody has their own particular choice. Some will stay on the halfway line and they can get both ends, both goals quite easily. What I find then though, is that the action is coming past you. It's coming side on. I want to be at the end of the pitch so I can see what's happening and I want the action coming straight towards me. I can then look up the whole of the pitch 
and see everything that's coming. With the 70 to 200 f2.8, I can cover the corner where I'm sat, up to and including past the goal mode. If it's on the far side of the pitch, then I can just switch quickly to the 420 mil as I'm using and get the further action uh, quite readily. Those two lenses will cover most things. I know that most of the pros will use the 400mm f2.8 lens, but for the varied shots that I take, the various sorts of photographs I do, the 300mm f2.8 is better. Plus the fact that the 400mm is very, very expensive. As I said before, I do this because I like doing it. I enjoy doing it. I don't get paid for it these days. It's just nice to be out there, get some fresh air, get some exercise, watch a game, take some photos and see my pictures in the paper in a couple of days' time. If I do suddenly win the lottery, then yes, I will probably get a 400mm f2.8. In fact, if I do win the lottery, I think the first thing, I'll buy two Z9 bodies. I mean, they're £5,500 each, and then you've got to buy converters for your lenses as well. So you can be looking towards £12,000 just to replace them but mirrorless is obviously the way to go in the future. At the moment, I'm quite happy with the D850s. They do what I want, and I shall use them as long as I can. I'm gonna switch it round now, and you can see where we are. So, as I said, I like to be here on the 18-yard line, or the goal line, so I can sweep easily and do any corner action work if required. I can then swing round from there and get all the goal mouth action. I can get past the goal, and once I get to maybe 10 yards past, I'll switch readily and that will give me the reach across to the other side of the pitch. That suits me. Like I say, everybody's different. I do bring a couple of backup bodies with me as well. I have uh, two D300S crop sensor bodies, which I'll use with wide angles on if I need to get big crowd shots or anything particularly wide angle. But this is okay for what I want. And I'm going to stand up now and have a wander around. Let's turn around and look at this. As I said before, I'm also using, there we go, that's how I'm set up, that's all the mud around where I sat, with a, a foldable stool. Minimax is the main name, there are others as well. This one does exactly what I require, and they're about 30 pounds a time, and they're excellent. Don't bring anything that's got legs on it, you'll sink into the ground. You can probably see what I've been doing here, just how muddy it is from my boots having been around. And there are the cameras that I use. There are the two D850s and a monopod as well. That does exactly what I want. I'm happy with those and I keep taking the photographs that I require. Well, that's it then. We are done. Time to go home. All the kit's packed in the car. I did wonder why nobody had parked in this particular spot when I turned up and now realise, yes, I've got a very nicely decorated car with lots of it's a little blossoms on it, very nice indeed. I'll get those swept off when I get back. And another thing you will notice, I meant to tell you, I am wearing a high-vis jacket. Whenever I go onto the pitch, I always wear a high-vis. You need to see and be seen when you're out there. It's surprising how many people don't see you and can quite easily knock you over. It's happened before. So always wear a high-vis when you're out there. It's for your own benefit. In fact, a lot of the grounds you go to, they will insist that you wear one when you're anywhere near the grass. That's it, time to pack up. Would you believe it, the sun's coming out now. I shall go home and have a nice cup of tea. Bye bye. So here we are, it's Wednesday, five days later, and I'm just finishing off the editing on this first video on this brand new channel for me. And as you're well aware, Walsall Wood won their game on Saturday. And when I got back, I found that the team in second place also won their game. So it meant it was all to play for on Tuesday night, which was yesterday. And Walsall Wood, well, they won their match, which means they are the undisputed champions and next season they'll progress up to step eight in the Football League Pyramid. So a big jump for them and I should be back there with them next season. Next weekend, I'm booked in at another local team, 20, 25 minutes drive away. Uh, they're in step seven, I think they are at the moment and they are currently in player positions. So they also have a 3G synthetic pitch. And the forecast isn't great for the weekend, but I know on the plastic pitches, games normally do go ahead. So I shall be down there and I shall do another video, which I shall put on to YouTube before too long. And then in the coming weeks, I'm having a little break for a week or so. I shall be then doing cricket for the next two or three months before we get back into the so-called winter sports. So more videos to come. I hope you've enjoyed this first one. Don't worry, it will get better. If you have enjoyed it, please feel free to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. And we shall try and build the channel into something worthwhile watching. But only time will tell. But 
thanks once again for passing by. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it. See you again soon.